Here we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to give a few more minutes for everyone to join us. Thank you again for signing up here for Noidum's YouTube channel. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about perception around sensors. So let's give a few more minutes just uh, for everyone to jump on board. After the presentation, we'll go ahead and open the uh, video to uh, Q&A. If you have any questions, concerns, just um, put them out there after the, um, the stream. Just one more minute and we'll start doing the uh, presentation. All right, so let's get started with the presentation. Again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, again, we are Perception Neuron. I uh, want to remind everyone here to contact us at contact at neuromocap.com for any questions, concerns. Uh, definitely send us an email so that we know what's going on. We love to hear from, you, from our community uh, what's going on, any projects that you guys are working with. Uh, we're constantly seeing new projects coming along, which is great. Uh, we see uh, many people using Perception Run uh, every day, more and more so often. So th that's great news. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead. And uh, remember to visit our help center. We have a lot of uh, questions there and a lot of, you know, answers that we might have uh, for you on the page. And uh, just to remember, uh, just to uh, let you guys know that two weeks ago we released a video for three essential keys. We want to remind you to visit our Neuron MoCap um, YouTube Live uh, channel there for, for any review on the, on the video that we have released. We have a lot of information there that we want all our users to see. Uh, we, it's very important to see that video. It has a lot of important information for everyone. Uh, definitely something to look at before you put your suit on. There's a couple of steps. We've narrowed it down to three steps. So that video is very important for everyone to check out. So let's go on with the presentation. Today's presentation is just perception on sensors. Uh, without the perception on sensors, we don't have any motion capture. So it's very important to understand uh, what's going on. On our website, neuromocap.com, uh, we have information of the details and information that the sensors have. That includes, you know, just typical information like size, dynamic range, acceleration, accelerometer range, resolution, and very technical information on there for everyone to, um, to, to check out. So definitely look at that information there. Uh, perception on sensors are nine degrees of freedom. They include magnetometer, gyroscope, and accelerometer. This is what makes up perception on. It's an inertial based motion capture suit. Uh, with this information, it is able to track motion. So that's basically in, in a nutshell. So each perception neuron sensor, you'll see it's very small. I'll bring one out here. It's very small, it's very tiny, almost the size of my fingernail. And you'll see on the, uh, on the sensor that there's like a little, little LED indicator when you hook it up to your perception neuron straps. That LED indicator is very important. How it blinks lets you know what's the current status. So we have a lot of information for you to, to share with you so that you can understand how to read and uh, what, what, what to know the current status of it. Inside of Access Neuron, we have a quick start guide on the welcome screen. Uh, you'll navigate a couple of pages uh, forward and you'll notice this page here which says Neuron LED status. Do not overlook this page. This is very important. This is something that we all have to uh, look at. Uh, without this, we don't know what's what's the current status of the perception on sensors. 
So we have a lot of different st uh, statuses. We have about four or five in there. If you click on the on the on the image, it, it's like a GIF activator, and it'll tell you relatively the blinking status of the perception on sensor. We have one hertz flashing. We have breathing mode. We have 20 hertz flashing mode. We have 0.3 slow flashing, and we have an uh, other status. So those are kind of the basic. Um, information that we have for the perception on sensors. That's inside of Axis Neuron. Another cool tip that uh, inside of Axis Neuron, if you go to your settings and go to the advanced, you have the option to choose how the gyro mode behaves. Uh, you can switch from nine axis to six axis and to auto detect. And we'll go ahead and, and show you uh, later on to, to this presentation or what, what the difference is. Uh, and, and Perception Neural, basically what it does is that it auto adjusts to whatever the, um, whatever it detects and whatever sensors it want to use. So it's very important for that to, to, to understand. So I've narrowed it down to two different uh, scenarios for everyone. We have standby mode and we have working mode. Standby mode is when you have these straps with the sensor connected to your computer. Uh, that means you have not connected into Access Neuron. It's just connected to the hub and then the hub to the computer. Uh, that is going to power up the Perception Neuron sensor. This is hardware mode. Uh, we have two different kinds of uh, statuses on that. We, we, we'll, we'll go over it in a little bit. Uh, working mode. In working mode, it is when you have the Perception Neuron sensor already connected inside of Access Neuron. Basically, when you go open Access Neuron, and you click on the connect icon and you select your hub, and that is when uh, the, the status changes on the neuron sensors. There is a different set of um, statuses there as well. So basically we have standby mode before you connect Axis Neuron, and working mode when Perception Neuron is working with Axis Neuron. So those two different type of um, LED uh, indicators are very important for everyone to understand. So let's go into standby mode. I created a slide for everyone to see. I hope um, it's, it's very self-explanatory here. There's, there's a good and there's a bad. Standby mode, again, is when you have the sensor connected into, uh, into your computer. Not connected to Access Neuron, it's just connected, powered by your computer. So good mode is gonna be when you're, when you're having a breathing mode. When you have breathing mode um, activated, that means that there's, there's a good connection that it, Access neuron, uh, the perception neuron sensor is ready to connect to, to, to access neuron, which is you know obviously a good good sign. Uh, when they now a bad sign is when you start seeing, uh, you know like a, a blinking uh, light before you connect you know your suit to access neuron. So that can tell you uh, a number of things. That can tell you there's a there's a firmware um, firmware uh, issue going on inside of the sensor, or it can mean that the sensor is not properly sitted. In that case, number one, very simple, just remove the sensor from the socket, place the sensor back in the socket, and see if the light changes to breathing mode. If, for example, the sensor does not go back into breathing mode, then you might have to uh, perform a firmware update inside of Axis Neuron, um, Neuron uh, Update uh, tool. Uh, so those are the two, uh, the two um, most, important, most important things to understand. Uh, for standby mode. That is before you connect your suit uh, into Axis Neuron. Now, I like to bring this up because uh, if, you, if you're connecting your suit and then you might have a sensor not showing up, uh, just take a, st a step back and just power on your suit and look at every sensor. Just see if there's a sensor that's not properly suited or maybe it just has a firmware update issue. Uh, this is a good indicator of what to tell you. So again, uh, thank you for the questions. We'll come back to them after the presentation. Uh, so that, that, is, that is standby mode. In working mode, working mode again is when you have, access, when you have the perception on sensors connected to Axis Neuron. That's when it's the sensors are, are reading data, it's capturing motion, it is ready to record. That's what everyone wants. So we, that, that we call that a 20 hertz uh, flashing light. Uh, Perception Neuron is using all nine degrees of freedom uh, for the sensors. 
Uh, that's, you know, everything from magnetometers, gyroscopes, and accelerometers. So that's a good indicator. So when you connect your perception neuron suit into axis neuron, this is, this is the lights that you sh should read. Now, going back to the next slide, this is something very important that I want everyone to, to understand. When, you're, when you have the suit on and it's connected inside of axis neuron, and you see that the sensors are blinking much slower than 20 hertz, then there's, there's an interference that the sensor is auto-detecting. So this is very important to understand. Uh, again, we're going from standby mode to working mode. For this example, we're talking about working mode. In working mode, uh, when the LED blinkings are, are flashing 20 hertz or below, that is something that lets you know that there's, there's an auto-detect feature going on. For example, the, if, if I'm using, this is for example a leg strap, if I have this connected inside of axis neuron, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, inside of axis neuron, it's gonna be blinking, flashing. If, for example, if I put this closer to, to a hard drive, now, mind you, we don't recommend you to do that, but if you put this close to a hard drive or a monitor or something like that, the sensors, the light's gonna slow down and it's gonna, it's gonna almost go to like a solid, a solid red light. As soon as it gets to a solid red light, that means there's something that the sensor is auto-detecting that's not right. So this is something very important to understand. That's why I want to let you guys know that, you know, get to know your sensors. So in many cases, what happens is that the sensor will auto-detect uh, some kind of uh, interference, and then it'll switch over to, to access gyro mode. And that's to, to work a bit efficient so that it doesn't, uh, you know, drift very much. It, it tries to minimize the drift on that. Of course, we, won't, we don't want to be in that kind of environment. Uh, when you suit up and you connect your suit into axis neuron and all your lights are blinking uh, at 20 hertz, that's a good, in, that's a good sign. Um, many times I put the suit on and I'm looking at my feet, I'm looking at all my sensors, and I make sure that everything's, you know, flashing at 20 hertz. If a sensor is blinking 20 hertz or less, and you see them very adjacent to a good working sensor, then you might be dealing with a magnetized sensor. So again, if it, the, the, the sensor is blinking less than 20 hertz, there's, an, there's something going on. Um, if I put it close to a hard drive, then that means there's some kind of interference. So again, we don't recommend you to do that. I'm just giving an example so that you guys understand uh, what, what's going on there. So again, I just want to reiterate, it's very important to know your sensors when operating before and when operating after. Uh, how your sensors uh, read in the, your environment is very important so that you can motion capture, you know, you can perform your motion capture correctly. Uh, so that's kind of like a good rule of thumb uh, for everyone out there. And that concludes the slides for today. Um, I want to thank everyone who joined us. T today's uh, quick slide was uh, very short in explaining uh, the more the important aspects of you know knowing your LED sensors, and and again I just want to remember remind everyone those are the LEDs that you find inside of your um, your perception sensors. These guys will tell you what's going on, so that's very important to understand. So I'll switch over to the Q and A's uh, for the for everyone who has joined us today. I uh, want to thank everyone again for just watching this quick video. Uh, we'll keep this video posted online so that everyone can uh, use this as a reference guide for future uses. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them uh, at the bottom. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll, we'll continue to have more live streams uh, coming up. Uh, if you have any questions, anything like that, just leave them in the comments again. So I'm just reading a couple of questions here. Just bear with me for a couple of more minutes, but thank you again for everyone hanging out there. So uh, just a quick question here, uh, if I can use one more cable with uh, the suit. So Perception Round only operates with one hub and one USB cable. You can operate Perception Round with, uh, through hardware, or you can operate that through, through Wi-Fi. Now, I also want to remind everyone that these LED indicators for the standby mode works for the uh, hard, hardware uh, and, and for the Wi-Fi as well. It's gonna, the LEDs will only light up on the Wi-Fi mode when uh, the hub successfully connects to uh, a router. 
if the hub does not connect to the router uh, on Wi-Fi mode, the perception on sensors will not turn on. As soon as the, the hub connects to a router, it'll power up all the perception on sensors and it'll, it'll, be, it'll go immediately to, to, to working mode at that point. So it, it's something just to uh, keep in mind for all those users out there. Uh, so yeah, keep the questions coming. And uh, we'll stick around. We'll stick around for a few more minutes here. Uh, again, we kept this video short, just to uh, straight to the point, so everyone can understand the um, LED indicators on this perception round. And I want to reiterate: it's something to definitely uh, keep in mind. It's, you know, just don't overlook it. It's very important to understand the LED indicators on the perception round sensors. Uh, next question is: Is face tracking on the way? Face tracking. Uh, it, it is it is in the works, uh, but we're not uh, we're partnering with a couple of, um, of co we're partnering with a company out there so that we can uh, provide some kind of uh, a bundle uh, for everyone out there. Uh, it's still in the works, uh, but it'll it's coming in pretty soon. It's very exciting stuff. So um, a lot of users can use a perception on suit with you know kind of like you know, a, a rig to to record their face as well. And have that information mapped up to um, your character at a as a live performance. Uh, the great thing about it that the our partners have a software that can export that data into FBX, so you can export the data um, through FBX, and you, you not only have the motion capture information there, but you also have the facing face capture information as well. So you know, depending on your workflow, you can uh, very well implement that into your your character. Uh, you know, if you're in Maya, you know, everyone has a different work, work, workflow. Uh, I'm more familiar with Maya. With Maya, you just uh, characterize your character, and then you characterize the motion capture information, map that uh, information together, and then the face capture information is just point data, so you can manipulate that with, you know, controls and stuff on, on the character space. So you have the option of using our, our partner's um, software that can already map that information to a character. Of course, you have to import your character into their software so that I can read the data um, live stream, or you can use our partner's software and export that uh, to, to, to an FBX file. Um, and, and then you can use that in Maya, Unity, any uh, software that uses uh, FBX. So this is a uh, very great uh, to, to have. Uh, we're all familiar with uh, face capturing. Uh, it's very it's been very expensive for quite some time, and then we're we're working on pretty much democratizing that that side of the industry as well. Uh, so that lets a lot of indus, uh, industries, like you know, indie game developers, VFX artists, you know, independent workers, to have that technology without having to break the bank. So that's uh, very very um, exciting there for everyone as well. Um, so I'll open up to a few more questions. So, Nico, thank you. Uh, just referring to his question, we are, we're, we're, we'll be streaming live uh, as much as possible every week on Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we definitely subscribe to our channel. We post up the videos the day before so that we can prepare everyone to join the stream uh, so that everyone can be on board. Uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us. I know it's a small crowd. Uh, hopefully, we start picking up more people out there to bring in more questions. It's definitely exciting to hear a lot of our users uh, have any questions, any doubts, uh, any exciting projects. Um, so definitely, again, thank you for everyone for joining us today. So uh, expect us to be here uh, around 3 p.m. same time next week. We'll be talking about a different topic at that point. So thank you. So Perception on Legacy at the moment, just answering this question, uh, it's only sold in, in, uh, in, in China at the moment. Perception on Legacy is just another uh, high-end uh, motion capture uh, system, uh, fully wireless. Right now, it's not available outside of uh, China. Right now, Perception on is the one that's sold worldwide uh, for all our users. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, right now at this point, there's there's uh, no update, no 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 update on that uh, that status. VR multiplayer shooter. So the next question is, we're making a VR multiplayer shooter. Will Neon work out? Uh, it all depends. Um, you, one thing you have to keep in mind, Perception is an inertial-based system. So uh, you do need 
uh, to have some kind of absolute tracking. Uh, we've had internally tested and, and, and just, you know, played around with it. Right now it's not fully supported, but, you know, using possibly like a Vive tracker to, 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 to um, link to your hip so that the perception on data can be grounded to a, a position. Uh, at, at this moment right now, there's no support for that. Um, perception on is inertial base. So if you're working with the VR multiplayer, uh, and I'm talking about like a room scale, like, you know, bigger than uh, the Vive tracking, you know, more of like, you know, like, you know, you can move around in a bigger area. Uh, there will be some, some, some drifting over time and that's just the inertial base system working at its best. It, Access Neuron is tracking that information and compensating for it, you know, removing any error filter or anything like that. So there will be some slight um, drifting over time. So if you put, you know, your character with, with you know, the, the, the HMD unit and you have the perception around, you can parent the HMD to the, um, to the, to the head uh, bone of the perception around. And you can walk around and move in space, but if, for example, if you have like an environment, uh, you'll notice that, you know, your origin, point of origin will change once you come back uh, after walking around. And that's just, you know, that's just basis, that's uh, the nature of an inertial based uh, motion capture system. Uh, just keep in mind it's relative tracking. Six player in one room. So Perception Neuron and Axis Neuron, Axis Neuron supports up to five suits. Uh, what you could do is you can have um, Axis Neuron is included with each and every suit. Uh, and you can install that in different machines. What you can do is you can have uh, one computer to one suit and send that data to um, an IP, through the IP to the TCP protocol into Access Neuron and Access, and, and I'm sorry, to Unity. And so in Unity, you can uh, read that data for all different computers that have a perception on suit. So that, that is an option. Um, but for one machine, you're limited to one, uh, I'm sorry, for one machine, you're limited to five uh, perception on suits, uh, but you can change that with different machines running it and sending it through the TCP protocol. Can you recommend any anti-drift tracing solution? Uh, right now, it's it's just a matter of asking uh, what is you know the difference between absolute tracking and relative tracking. Uh, absolute tracking is 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 a, in most cases one to one tracking. That's that's like uh, systems out there like you know OptiTrack and uh, anything that has to do with camera based. Uh, those, those systems, uh, the, you know, calibration just is only required for the cameras, multiple cameras in an area. Uh, for for uh, re re relative tracking is, is, is like perception run, is inertial based, and is using foot contact for positional data on that. So uh, there's no cameras involved. When you're putting on the perception on suit, uh, you're working, um, you know, with the suit by itself, it's it's reading the data from the environment. It's sending that data to the hub. The hub is calculating and sending that back to Axis Neuron. Uh, so there's no cameras involved. So you know there's there's always going to be that you know some slight drift uh, with, with the motion tracking. Uh, yeah, there's many suits out there uh, with um, you know inertial based that do have that, uh, it, is, it is the IMU, uh, inertial base system. Uh, everyone has different uh, solutions to that. Uh, it is just the nature of, of the sensors, you know, where with, with magnetometers, accelerometers, and gyroscopes, uh, we're dependent on the environment. Uh, every environment is very different. Uh, if you're, if you're mo-capping inside of our convention center, it's gonna be a totally different environment from if I'm motion capturing at a wood house, for example. Uh, or at a concrete-based uh, environment. So, again, I want to, you know, just remind everyone to check out that video on the three essentials of perception run. Uh, that's that's a very important video to 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 see, so that everyone understands, you know, the three most important things. And and I throw it out there as you know because we include environment. Uh, when you're motion, when you're doing motion capture, knowing your environment is very important. There's tools out there. There's uh, apps on your phone that you can use and you can install that are free. Uh, I, I recommend uh, Sensors Multi-Tool. Uh, it's in the Android App Store. And that's one of the best uh, apps that I've used. Uh, and it lets me survey the area before motion capture. You know, you don't want to start, just open up your, your, your box and suit up and then start recording 
and then you run into surprises. You want to survey your area before you capture. Make sure you're not close to a computer. Make sure you're not close to um, any TV. You have freedom to move. The environment's uh, suitable for the for the for the perception on sensor to work. Um, Axis Neuron has workarounds with that. Uh, you know, there's there's you can disable the magnetometers inside of Axis Neuron uh, through the parameters uh, window as well. So there's you know workarounds. Um, and, you know th th that's a great thing about Perception Neuron that you know there's different working modes. Uh, we released working modes earlier this week as well. Um, you can use a suit for 32 sensors or just you know up to like three sensors. So depending on you know whatever your needs is, whatever the case is for the mocap or for the environment, you can adjust accordingly. So when you're recording, some sensors are going crazy. Um, there's two suspects to that. Um, again, uh, I want to reiterate that the environment is very important. Uh, a lot of times, that the when, whenever you're you're checking, you're surveying your environment. I'll use a phone app to, you know, like a magnetometer app to, 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 to check what's going on. Uh, once you find what I like to call the sweet spot, and then that's where you find a good environment that's suitable for, for capturing, uh, that's where you want to do the zero pose and uh, the posture calibration. When you do the posture calibration in an area that's around 30 Teslas or below, uh, then your suit is going to be, it's going to be working at an optimal level. Now, if you calibrate, posture calibrate an environment that uh, has a lot of high uh, uh, information on Teslas, you know, anything above 50 or like that, and it starts interfering, what's going to happen is that all that bad data that you calibrate inside of your, on your posture calibration, is going to, it's going to lead up to your fingers. Uh, the fingers are the sensitive um, part of, of, you know, the, the data. So that's basically going to feed over to the, um, to the fingers. So number one, just perform the posture calibration in a suitable area so that you can you, your whole entire suit can work at an optimal level to minimize the finger um, situation number two uh, just check the, the the status of the of the neuron sensors by you know just checking if they're calibrated you know they might be they might be um, magnetized uh, so inside of access neuron we have uh, on the top left we have an uh, option where you know you can go to the tools and do uh, neon calibration. So that's something that I can definitely uh, check out. So two things, uh, performing a posture calibration in a, a suitable area, very important so that the suit can work optimal. And number two, just check the um, neuron um, magnetization. You know, you don't want those sensors to be magnetized. You know, just calibrate those guys. So give me one second. I'm here just reading a few more comments before I close the show. So yeah, that's uh, that's the drawback about using um, just uh, going back to one of the questions regarding you know we can't use camera-based system to to resolve the drift. Um, you know that's that's one of the the you know the pros and cons of you know using camera-based tracking systems. Uh, you have very expensive systems out there. Uh, where each camera is, is is very expensive, and then you the more cameras you have, the better tracking you have. The less cameras you have, the you know, you start having, uh, you know, basically missing tracking points, which is what you don't want, which is why we've created Perception Run. Perception Run allows you to track uh, your body at a much affordable price uh, for all of our users. Uh, so this is something very important for everyone to understand. So um, it, it's one of those pros and cons. Uh, um, optical tracking systems are, are great. Uh, inertial systems are great. Each, each of them have you know, pros and cons. Uh, what I love about Perception On is that it's very affordable, very simple to use. One person can use it. You don't need a team to, to use it. Um, it's, it can be used in schools. It can be used in, in, in animations um, teams. Uh, you can buy multiple suits, have your artist have one, take one home, and, and motion capture in, his, in, in the comfort of his home. You can travel. Uh, it's portable. Uh, we like to call it a uh, mocap in the lunchbox. <laughs> so that's one of the great things to, uh, to, to always remember. So, you know, there's always pros and cons with, you know, both systems. So um, I'll wrap it up now. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us. 
And let me big, put a big thank you for everyone for joining us. So uh, remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, leave any questions, comments so that we can follow up. We want to thank everyone joining us today.